one and all, we are climbing a mountain today looking at a titan of a headset, the Asus ROG Theta 7.1. This monster has a price to match its size, an RRP of $249.99. As expected, with a big headset comes a big box. So the box itself tells us that it's won the Design Award of 2019, TeamSpeak and Discord certified, and high-res audio. Also, the box features a nice close-up of those biggie, biggie headphones. And on that back, we have some details of the features, which we will go through shortly. The compatibility is here and the package contents. Okay, so getting into the box is nice and easy and you just slide the box out from the outer sleeve and it reveals this really sci-fi looking data or power module style of a box here. The box comes apart and it reveals the headset on its own little pedestal. There's a bag that contains the spare cups USB to USB-C lead, manual and warranty card. So overall, pretty impressive packaging. I would kind of expect this for that kind of money though. So, you know, I'm impressed so far. So before we sling these on, let us have a chat about how the headset looks. Asus have gone for a black design, aluminium alloy ear cups and yoke with silver metal cup trim or framing and some gloss accents run along the cup edges. The plastic is of a satin finish and it does attract grease and also the head strap is really easy to scratch. I have quite short nails and it did scuff it slightly just handling it and putting it on the table. Underneath the head strap is a cushioned headband. It does initially feel rather thin but we will see how it feels later on. The cups kind of turn inwards which I think is to help when changing the ear cushions but I am disappointed to see that there's no swivel. There are two types of cups here so one of them is thinner and provides a contour fit and comes in at 2.9 centimeters and the other cups only have pleather on the inside edges and are thicker coming in at 3.5 centimeters. The mesh inside the cups also houses that Asus logo which is a nice touch as you know I do like details. The buttons consist of a switch that says PC slash MB to phone and this means that since mobile phones cannot detect any device with a 7.1 surround you need to enable that phone mode to be connected to a phone. For everything else you would switch it to the PC NB. Below this you have a rocker switch for the volume which also is the mute mic if you push the rocker in all the way and re repeat it to turn the mic back on again. An indicator on the tip of the boom flashes red when the microphone is muted letting you easily see the microphone status. Also if you press the button for five seconds you can turn the RGB on or off. The headset doesn't have its own independent volume it will control your system or device's volume. Other headsets sometimes have their own volume control and you can find its own volume control in the software but the rocker switch will change the volume for the windows for example. There is also an RGB ready logo here on the side of the cups. The RGB is pretty bright. There are a good few options to choose from including off but I am a bit of a magpie and it does seem a little lost on such a huge headset. I would have liked to have seen a bit more RGB but I know some of you do like a subtle look so if you do this is for you. The adjuster inside the cups is metal and houses a really nice design but you probably won't really see it that much unless you have the headset in full extension. The mic design is similar to the other mics from Asus and I really like the design. It is easy to manipulate but it keeps resistance and it doesn't fall down and it looks pretty sleek too. Now I know these bad boys will need some serious power so I do understand the thick cables but on the top of the lead here there is no braiding or anything just basic rubber. Something like what you would find poking out the back of your TV for example. This not only makes it really inflexible but also clunky and I wouldn't say heavy, but when you're wearing it, it's kind of like wearing a medallion. The rest of the cable is braided, but again, I am slightly disappointed with the braid itself. It's really thin and it kinks really easily. And a simple running of the hand down the cable won't remove it either. Another point on the cable is that it comes with that USB to USB-C cable so that you can connect it to your PC if you don't 
don't have a USB-C port. This again is rubber, so if you had to use this headset cable altogether, it would go rubber to braid and back to rubber again, which I think looks a bit odd and mismatchy. I would have said in my opinion it would have looked better all rubber in that case, but let us know down in the comments what you think, there's no right or wrong here. Now, how does this headset feel? When I first put these on with the thinner pleather cups, they reminded me of the old school hi-fi headphones you would sometimes get in school or in the 80s with those huge hi-fis. They're pretty heavy too. They're 590 grams with the cable, which is non-removable, of course. They create a bit of pressure on the top of the head because of this. You can't feel the plastic or anything. It's really just pressure. The clamp is a bit tighter under the ears, which can be loosened if you kind of push the top of the cups in a bit, it kind of loosens the bottom. I do find that there is quite a bit of movement though as you look around the room or take a drink, but again, this is most likely down to the weight. The cups themselves, they're pretty comfortable, very spongy, good at keeping the noise out, and the other thicker cups feel a bit odd to me after the other ones, but you know, that's down to preference, that's why they give you a choice. It really is easy to change these cups too, which is a bonus. Not that I think you would change them all the time, but it's nice to be able to do it quickly and easily if you have to. I have experienced some really fiddly ear cup exchanges before, and I'm glad the Asus have really nailed it here. These cups are really airtight too, they don't let in or out any sound as such. You can obviously hear background noise, they're not completely sound barricaded, <laughs> but you know, it, they are really good. They don't let too much sound in or out. Overall, I would say that the comfort is less than expected for such a high price headset. And I know you might think I'm being harsh here with this headset so far, but you are looking at spending a premium rate of $249.99 but all this is just my opinion, let's be honest, you're probably not gonna be buying these for the looks and or comfort alone. So let's see what the key features are. The name explains Asus's vision when it comes to what they were trying to achieve with the Theta sound environment, as Theta is the eighth letter of the Greek alphabet. The form of this character also offers a simple visualization of the Theta 7.1. The outer circle encapsulates the headset ability to deliver 360 degrees 7.1 surround sound, with the line through the middle representing the gamer right in the center of the audio soundscape. The Theta has true 7.1 surround, and I feel that this is one of its biggest selling points, and it explains the price tag. The Theta has eight big drivers, four on the right and four on the left. Yes, some other brands do have five drivers, but Asus have explained by removing the fifth driver, it removes poor bass reproduction, and often the other ones get compromised due to the size in the, in the cup. You can't have five perfectly sized, non-compromised drivers. So the idea is by removing the sub-driver, they pipe the entire frequency spectrum, including low frequencies, to the four large drivers. As well, they have incorporated virtual bass to complement the sound spectrum if you're missing it. All specs are available on the kitguru.net website, but as this is such an expensive product, I think it's really important for us to understand why this device is potentially priced as it is. I'll touch on a few of the main details, but again, remember to check the website for full specs if you want to find out more. One of the important things to know is the 7.1 DAC. Yes, okay, it delivers great specs, but it also stays cool. Some home theatre grade DACs tend to overheat, but this one in particular has a temperature reducing compound that dissipates that heat, and this means it should stay cooler for longer and prevent sweaty ears, so that's really good. Another reason why this headset could cost a bit more than other headsets is the fact that some other headsets use a single amplifier to power multiple drivers, and that can lead to loss of detail in the sound, basically. The Theta 7.1 uses four ESS9601 headphone drivers. This increases the amount of details and helps to pinpoint placement of effects. Moving away from the super nerdy stuff now, <laughs> Asus have included some base technologies that they have included in some of their other headsets, which are really worth mentioning, such as hypergrounding technology, which helps reduce static interference, airtight chambers to reduce noise escape and subduing outside noise from getting to your ears, as briefly mentioned earlier. The mic also has AI-powered noise cancelling, which again is another big feature. 
Uh, it's a clever little chip in the headset that sort of kills background noise on the mic to prioritize the voice. And it does this by having a programmed AI. The AI has listened to millions of hours of in-game chat and it knows what to kind of cut out and prioritize. I will let you listen to the mic test now. This is the mic test uh, with the AI noise cancellation on. This is me speaking normally. This is me speaking pretty loud. This is me talking quite quietly. Spring. The there is no ambient noise here, so you won't be able to hear anything behind me. But I will do some typing and see if you can hear that. This is mic test number two. So this is with the AI noise cancellation off. So hopefully you can hear a difference when I type now. And also, I will just do a quick demonstration of the different volumes as well. So this is me talking normally. This is me talking quite loud. This is me talking quietly. And this is me whispering. This is the third and final microphone test. So this is with the AI noise cancellation on and the compressor as well. Whereas before, it was just straight raw microphone, nothing else on it apart from either AI noise cancellation on or off. So this is me talking normally, this is me talking quite loudly, this is me talking quietly, and this is me talking softly. I think you can hear a huge reduction in background hiss when the AI noise cancellation is on, and it is really, really useful. However, the mic itself, I would say, is really not that great quality. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but it kept clipping and it distorted at one point, and it really can't handle too much high volume speaking. You could mess around with the mic settings and add noise gates and turn the volume output down and yada 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 to see if it makes any difference. But I have seen mics perform better than this one straight out of the box with these tests. Anyway, we can go on and on about how it looks and the specs, but it means nothing if it doesn't perform. Without any software, I thought I'd try some music. I know that's not what these are for, but some of us do enjoy listening to music whilst playing games. So I searched Spotify for some hard dubstep. I thought this would put the headset to the test. I was not disappointed. The headset 7.1 surround really kicks in and it gives songs a totally different layer that you never normally hear. And I imagine this is how the artist must intend it to be. So you really do get a totally different perspective to your favorite songs. The bass was a bit lacking though, and you can change some of the sound profiles and EQ in the software, but I, I just don't think it really added as much as a sub driver would have and you do miss it but as I explained earlier when talking about the drivers they did remove it for a reason to provide a more balanced sound environment and give an all-rounded mix which I think they have achieved and to have four fully uncompromised drivers rather than sticking a fifth in and the other four having to be slightly lesser to accommodate that I think it is the right decision but I don't really like the sound profile that it gives you guys might love it the important test for me is going to be some Call of Duty Modern Warfare which as you may know I use often Often because it really tests the headset ability to differentiate between details as well as directional audio cues and balance loud noises such as explosions. The theta provides exactly what it says on the tin. Directional sound is really pinpointed and absolutely the best 7.1 sound I have heard. I find it did help me know where the enemy was coming from but I was not blown away as such. I'm not really a big fan of the flat sound profile but that's just me. I was more impressed when listening to music than I was playing a game and I imagine this is so you can hear all the frequencies and customize it to your liking perhaps just like a photographer shooting in raw but it just didn't hit the spot for me. The one thing I did notice though on the upside is there was no distortion no matter how loud you went with the volume and how high the frequencies were when playing it did never falter it was brilliant I did play with the software as well which I will show you now and this software is the Armory 2 software. You've maybe seen this before, but if you haven't, then we'll have a quick run through. On the first page, you can see you have many options for the volume, surround sound, EQ, and you can also control the AI noise cancellation, which I mentioned earlier. Along the top here is the lighting tab where you can change the color or pattern or effect, as well as some other options that you can see. Next, you can sync multiple devices RGBs. I used the FPS option to play Call of Duty, and 
the music option for music, of course. You could spend ages fully customizing the EQ as such, but I feel that the overall profile is pretty flat no matter what you choose. So let's run through some pros and cons. Pros, interchangeable cups is pretty cool. Easy to change cups as well. It's simple but effective design, goes with many people's setups. There is RGB, impressive specs in regards to the drivers and the 7.1 surround, etc. Airtight cups, hyper grounding, which is good for that static. AI powered noise cancellation. There is very good pinpointing and direction. And this really helps with things like Call of Duty. And there is no buzz or distortion on any of the tests audibly. Cons. It's easily scratched and a greasy finger magnet, which is a bit annoying. Uh, there's no swivel on the cups. Chunky wires and a heavy inflexible intersection. Mismatch cables, quite heavy on the head and it moves around on your head. Not very bassy at all when playing music or playing games or anything really, kind of missing that bass. And I have seen some of the bass features in much cheaper headsets. Not the 7.1 and the tech of course, but the AI mic tech, which is one of the really useful things here. Very flat audio profile. The mic is not overly impressive. So, okay, what's my conclusion? I know I may have come across a bit harsh here in this review, but this is just my opinion, of course, but for the price, I really think there are other headsets I would consider besides this one, including some of the other Asus headsets. I think there is a place for the Theta 7.1. It is suited potentially more to the professional or competitive gamer, which I think that is what Asus are aiming for, as it does state it is developed by professional gamers. Competitive and professional gamers will really benefit from the accurate 7.1 range, but others like myself that like to be able to have the option of some serious bass, as well as being able to hear footsteps in FPS at the same time, might feel that there is something missing from that flat profile in this headset. Couple with the above cons, which let's face it, there is quite a few, it really left me wanting more and I was a little bit disappointed. Again, some of you out there may love this headset and please let us know down below if you're one of those people. And whilst you're down there, make sure you hit that subscribe and check out our witty merch and make sure you check out kitguru.net daily for tech updates. And I will see you next time. My name's Christina, see you again.